After this tutorial, everyone will own a virus. Hello Internet, and welcome to a new tutorial. The virus, this legendary synthesizer that shaped and still shaping Satran's music. Everyone wants to get his hands on a unit, but not everyone can afford it or can find a unit nearby. But what if I told you that the struggle is over and today in 2022 you can get the virus synthesizer in your doll for free no matter what OS you're using. Yeah. But before we dive into this tutorial, if you'd like to support the channel, you can consider becoming one of my patrons or buy my presets on Grimroad or just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Content like this is posted every week and special content for my patrons. Now, back to the tutorial. So what the fuzz is all about? Last year, if I'm not mistaken, a group of developers started working on an emulation for the DSP, or basically the processors, or the brains, of the virus synthesizer and many other synthesizers, like the Nord D3, Nord Micro Modular, the Waldorf Q, the Waldorf Micro Q, and the Korg MS-2000. These chips that they're emulating were made by Motorola, and they were like the OG DSP chips for synthesizers back in the day. So, all what we have to do after downloading and installing the emulator, which comes in VST and AU formats, we have to feed it with the ROM file, which is basically the OS of the desired synthesizer, and it'll run it on your CPU as if your CPU was the DSP. So basically, you're getting the purest form of emulation. I mean, in here, it's not trying to emulate how the synthesizer used to sound. In here, it's turning your CPU to the DSP and it's running the original code from the hardware itself. So it's like pure, you know? <laughs> it's a little bit geeky, but like you're getting the real thing in here. There will be some slight differences because of the chips used. For example, this whole tutorial is based on a ROM file from the Access Virus C. And the Access Virus C used to run at a sample rate of 46. 46,875 hertz, which is a little bit weird, but compared to this session that we're using and we're running at 44.1 kilohertz, there will be some aliasing that we won't achieve unless we have the hardware. But, but yeah, like there's some slight differences, but still you're getting the real thing for free, <laughs> you know, in your DAW. So, and I think this is awesome. So, before we start hearing how it sounds and we take a look at it, you have to watch out for a couple of things. First off, this emulator eats a lot of CPU, so try to test if your CPU and computer can handle it. There's a test program on the emulator's website. And second of all, I'm not quite sure if the emulator is at a stage where it'll run other uh, synthesizers than the virus. I've just tried it with the virus and it runs... Perfectly. Now, one last thing before we hear it in action, I promise, and I'm just anticipating the comments. 
Should we forget about the Viper VST? Nope, we shouldn't forget about the Viper VST because Viper is another synthesizer. Even though it's trying to emulate the virus, it's not the virus. It can do more than the virus can do and it has other features like, for example, it can load user wavetables, it, it has a shimmer reverb to it, it has enhanced frequency modulation algorithms. So yeah, it's not a virus. So yeah, with that said, let's hear it in action. So here we are in Ableton, woohoo! And you know, the DSP looks like this. Uh, basically, just like a virus, you have the three oscillator section in here, the unison, mixer, ring mod, love how this thing sounds. We have the dual filters that we can round in different ways. Two envelopes in here. Nope, this is not a TI. We only have two envelopes. Uh, Three LFOs, the lovely modulation matrix, man, this modulation matrix, just love it. Uh, we have the effects in here, the famous phaser, man. We'll hear it in action in a few, it just sounds awesome. Chorus equalizer, we have delay and reverb. Uh, by, by the way, the reverb is really nice in here, but it's not my favorite. And I really prefer the one on Viper, it sounds way better. And then we have the arpeggiator section. Now the arpeggiator section didn't really work for me. Maybe it's a problem with the ROM file I'm using, or maybe it's a problem with the, with the emulation. I don't know, but the arpeggiator doesn't, isn't working. It's not a big deal because I can replace it with other things, but you know, I have to be honest with you guys. So yeah, that's, it's not working with me. And here we have, uh, we can load patches from the TI, for example, as long as the patch doesn't use specific uh, features in the for the TI, for example, it'll work perfectly in here. So yeah, let's hear it in action and make a really simple FM patch. Because, you know, the virus is known for its lovely FM, so let's make an FM patch with it and hear it in action. So here we have this simple saw. Let's take... Oscillator 2, as I always do, with a virus. Let's sync both oscillators. And I'm going to leave the FM mode on the post try, which is the famous algorithm from the first virus unit from the virus A. Basically, it's some sort of a ghost, let's say, triangle outputted from the first oscillator, and it's going to modulate the second oscillator. So this means that the pitch of the first oscillator will, det will determine the pitch of this ghost triangle thing. So what I'm going to do, I'll take it just one octave lower and I'll start cranking that FM amount knob. Now we'll have this. Man, it's all so good. Now what I'm going to do, oscillator 2, I'll set it to wave. So Basically, how the virus works is that you have a wave shape and it can morph between this wave shape, the saw wave, and the, tri and the square wave. So here I've set it to wave, so we have the wave shape. The first two wave shapes are sine and triangle, and then we have some really interesting shapes. But for now, I'll set it to wave, let's say, 44, see how it sounds like. Oh, pretty nice. Now, let's cycle through some of these wavetables and see what we have. Oh, this one sounds so good. Okay, I'll leave it on this one. So right now, I don't have my push on me. I'm using my keyboard. So for that, uh, I'm not sure I'm hitting the right note. So I have a pattern here in E1, which is the root note of this project. And it sounds like this. Perfect. Now let's play with these filters a little bit. Man, that sounds so good. You know what? Let's add an auto play in here and start modulating stuff with an arpeggiated sequence being sent to the emulator. Perfect. So what I'll do, I'll set the filter balance to filter one. I'll set the filter one to bandpass.
Perfect. So what I'll do with the first cutoff, I'll modulate it with the second LFO and the first LFO. So the first LFO, I'll leave it on triangle and I'll set the rate to something slow. And I'll send it to the first cutoff, just like so. Now we have this. Okay, perfect. And the second LFO, set it to sample and hold, maybe one and eighth. I'll set the phase to one. So here's a trick with the virus. I think I've already showed it in my Viper video. You always have to set the phase to one if you want it to re-trigger every time it receives a new MIDI note. So that's why I've set it to one. Now let's crank the modulation on the first cutoff. Now we have this. Pretty nice. Let's go back to the filter section here and set the algorithm to Serial 6. When it's on Serial 6, the first cutoff will be a 24 dB per octave filter. When it's on Serial 4, it's 12 dB per octave. So now we have this. No, I think that's too much. Let's see if it's on Serial 4. Let's go to the effect section. I'm keeping this things simple for this patch, okay? Now let's take the phaser in here, crank the mix up. Do you hear that <laughs> virus phaser sound already? You know, let's take the depth and set the frequency somewhere in here. Now let's give it more feedback first. change the spreading a little bit. You know what, let's give it more stages. Let's go six. You know, hardcore. Okay, as you can see here we have the sweet spot. So what I'll do, I'll leave the frequency like so. I'll go to my LFOs in here and the third LFO, I'll clock it to four and one. Okay, and what I'll do in the modulation matrix in here, I'll take a free slot, take LFO three and I'll set it to the phasers frequency, phasers frequency. Perfect. Now let's add some delay. Delay two on one is basically a ping pong. Delay, I'll set the clock to three on eight. I'll give it some mix and some feedback. And let's see with a kick and bass what we will get. Perfect, that's pretty nice. Now, how will it sound compared to the Virus TI and Viper? That's going to be the subject for another video. But for now, that was the DSP 56300. Sounds awesome. It's a, it's a real virus in the box. And uh, yeah, 
go download it, have fun with it, and get that virus sound to your tracks. And yeah, with this, this is the end of this tutorial. Hope you've liked it. See you next time.